April is Parkinson's Awareness Month, and according to the Parkinson's Foundation, nearly 90,000 people in the U.S. are diagnosed with the disease each year. Will is back to tell us how a new device is being used to treat it. Well, hey, Robin, this is remarkable. And recent research shows the number of people living with Parkinson's disease could double by the year 2050. And while there is no known cure, this new device may make life easier for some of the one million people in the U.S. living with the disease, like Rand Laycock, who has found a renewed passion and purpose and ability a decade into living with Parkinson's. Rand Laycock is a man of many talents, including conducting music. Another, perhaps more hidden talent, is managing the movement disorder Parkinson's disease for the past 10 years. And as the former music teacher's tremors and freezes worsened, he worried he would have to stop what he loved the most, bringing a score to life. I would imagine that your Parkinson's diagnosis was difficult for many reasons, especially so because it would impact your ability to teach and conduct music. That became a real concern of mine because I thought, what am I gonna be able to conduct or not? It was getting to the point that I would start rehearsal and I'd be kind of frozen. And you know, this was starting to get embarrassing. I thought, am I gonna to have to give this up? Which would have killed me. Luckily, the cavalry came at the right time. Rand's White Knight, a newly FDA-approved adaptive deep brain stimulation, or DBS, device. Electrodes implanted in Rand's brain send small electrical signals based on his brain activity, a sort of pacemaker for the brain. The device provides therapy for the misfiring signals in real time. It's always in my right hand. Here's the device turned off and then turned on. Instant relief and a steadier hand for conducting. Each patient's reason for DBS is different. It's gonna to be to fix, to help their tremor, to reduce their medication burden. Uh, it can reduce the medication side effects. It's been tremendous. It doesn't eliminate the problems, but it makes them much more manageable. What did that feel like emotionally? It made it so that I wasn't thinking about Parkinson's all day long. That had to be nice. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful indeed. Rand had his surgery at the Cleveland Clinic, which was involved in the research to develop these devices and was one of the first sites in the U.S. to implant them. And since then, Rand is back at the gym. He's working out, getting stronger. That will also help with his Parkinson's. Guys, he said he feels like a cloud has been lifted. Really, well, I'll bet he does. Okay, well, thanks very much. Just being our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Tara Narula. Pretty remarkable story. It is. Right there. Can, can this device work for a lot of other people? Yeah, well, we know that this device is really meant for individuals who are on medication and are still having symptoms or having side effects from the medication, this deep brain stimulation. The hallmark of treatment is generally starting with medication that basically increases dopamine in the brain or mimics dopamine. This is the neurotransmitter that we know is lost in patients with Parkinson's. There are some other surgical procedures, ultrasound, and then ways to treat Parkinson's like exercise. So that's a big one. We know that's important for balance and mobility, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. So there are definitely different ways to approach it. but. Uh, a very you know difficult disease like so many of the other degenerative progressive neurologic disorders that really don't have a cure mm -hmm. it seems it presents itself differently with with each patient but what are what are the first signs and symptoms that we should look for yeah it can be tricky because it can kind of progress over years so definitely it usually starts on one side of the body and then becomes both on both sides of the bodies you'll see symptoms but the hallmark is this triad of essentially a tremor we call it a resting tremor a pill rolling tremor so you may see somebody with their thumb and their finger kind of going back and forth as if they're Ooh. rolling a pill that presents in about 70 to 80 percent of patients then we think about something called bradykinesia or hypokinesia which is slowness of movement so this means it's maybe hard to get out of a chair, get up from a car, they have a shuffling sort of walk, difficult to use their hands to maybe type or use a computer mouse, button uh, buttons or tie their shoes. And then things like rigidity, that's the third one. So when they're walking, they're not really swinging their arms, they're sort of stooped over. And then there can be non-motor symptoms, so depression, constipation, loss of smell, uh, hallucinations, cognitive changes. Some other things to look out for, small handwriting, a masked appearance to the face, and a low sounding voice.
And, and what advice do you have for those who are caring for someone with Parkinson's? So this is so important. So certainly they should get educated about the disease to be understanding of what is going to happen. They need to take time for themselves to set realistic goals. There are so many support groups out there. But I think one thing that we don't often talk about is care for caregivers, right? It's incumbent yes. on all of us. You know, if you watched the documentary on Will's family, there's a beautiful moment in there just to tie it back where he finds his mother's journal and talks about the isolation and the loneliness. And for so many caregivers, it is that quiet suffering because it is such an emotional, physical burden to kind of care for someone else. So it's incumbent upon us. We also recently heard Emma Willis say something similar, which was that caregivers need care too, right? So that they can continue to care for those they love. So we should all reach out to those people, make sure they're okay, see how we can help them as well. Oh, a lot of good advice. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. And you were so caring with your daughter who's here with us. <laughs> You've been holding hands with her. Michael was like being a little, a little guard over here. <laughs> Layla, her name's Le Her name's Layla. Layla. Yes, Layla. she's Layla. with me today. Yeah, yeah. But was it last week, bring your kid to school? It <laughs> no, was. It was. Our nanny isn't here today. So <laughs> she's oh, here with me this morning, and oh, I'm taking her to school. Oh, I'm so <laughs> terrible. I'm so hard. Yes. But she is adorable. <laughs> Say hi, Layla. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you really have to get on the treadmill on Sundays? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <See>? busted. <laughs>